Greetings again, everybody. This is Dr. Swanson with your video introduction to Topic 3. And Topic 3 in the COM 362 class is Strategic Writing and Advertising. Now you're probably going, whoa, 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 wait a minute. This is public relations writing. Why are we doing strategic writing and advertising? Well, there's a couple of reasons why. Number one is when the new book came out, it included a section on advertising. And, uh, okay, in a public relations book, a section on advertising, you're saying. Uh, but there's actually a really good reason for this. There actually is good strategic basis for this. The strategic concepts that we use to work as a public relations writer, those strategic concepts are very similar to what we would be using in writing advertising copy. As I bring out in the, the uh, Learning Outcomes Readings and Study Guide associated with this topic area, advertising and public relations are strategically very similar. In fact, there's a lot of similarity, and you know this if you took my principles class, there's a lot of similarity between advertising, public relations, marketing, sales, promotions, and you could even tack journalism onto the end of that because there's a lot of similarities in all of those. For example, journalism is a writing-based discipline. A lot of what we do in public relations follows a journalistic format. Marketing is a very strategic communications function. It thinks about products and services through the life cycle. It thinks about how we create and design and develop and manufacture and produce. So there's some similarities there. Promotion and public relations are very similar. Promotion is very much a one-way oriented communication, but there's a lot of similarities between promotions and PR. There's also a lot of similarities between sales and public relations because we use this, a lot of the same kind of interpersonal techniques in sales that we do in public relations. And then lastly, advertising and public relations, a lot of syn synergy, if you will, there because strategically, they are both disciplines that create messages. Now, I would argue that advertising is specifically intended to facilitate the purchase of products and services by consumers at the point at which consumers are ready to buy. And so advertising is very much a consumer-related field, whereas public relations, I would argue, sets the overall climate for communications. I would argue that if an organization is doing good PR, advertising's job will be really easy because PR sets the tone for how organizations communicate and how they perceive who it is they're communicating with. So there's a lot of synergy between advertising and PR. Also, that we, we consider these two together now, is because think about social media. Where does it belong? Where does social media belong in terms of the communication that we, that we disseminate through social media? I could argue that there's a place for it in journalism. I could argue there's a place for it in advertising. I could argue there's a place for it in PR. I could argue there's a place for social media in entertainment and tourism. Who owns social media? Well, it's not really owned by any of those fields. It's owned by all of those fields because social media encompasses all of those fields. I mean, the simplest blog post is part journalism because you're writing and telling a story. It's part public relations because you're representing yourself or an organization. It's part advertising because you're, you're wanting people to do something and you might indeed want them to consume a product or service. It's, it's really all of those things. So, so social media doesn't really have a home in any of the concentrations. And so that too is why social media in the readings has kind of been plugged into this area because it seems to fit well with advertising. So anyway, the concepts in this topic area, although labeled advertising, are really relevant across the communication spectrum. Another little note, we did a survey back in 2013 and we went to find out, that was the last time the department came up for accreditation. We went to find out where have our graduates gone? Do they stay within the concentrations? Do they do different things? Where have they gone? And when you look at the spreadsheet of where graduates in recent years have gone versus their concentration, it's all over the place. P 
PR people are working in advertising, advertising people are working in PR, journalists are working in PR, PR people are working in journalism, entertainment people are working all over the place. It, you won't stay within your concentration after you graduate. And in fact, this is a little known fact until people realize it after they graduate, your diploma will not have your concentration on it. It will simply say, if you're a comm major, it will simply say that you are a major in communications. So the concentrations don't show up on the diploma. Our point here is to graduate well-equipped, thoughtful, critically thinking communications professionals who can work across the spectrum of the field, even though we are training you in your concentration for some very specific things. So who knows where, and I've said this before, who knows where the field is going to go? What will public relations look like in 15 years? Will we even call it PR? Uh, I don't know. So we're training you to do a variety of different things. And the focus in this topic area is on advertising because we're looking at specific advertising examples, but the concepts remain the same. So um, what you'll see in the, in the study guide, there's a, a table in the middle. This is a thing I did for a magazine eons ago, back in 1996. It's still true today. These are the key differences between different types of advertising media. Um, what are their advantages and, di and disadvantages and how they differ from each other. And this is still true today, even though social media is, on the, is not on this sheet. Uh, these are the traditional forms of advertising. But, um, you know, that, that's still accurate. And so as we go into anything as a writer, if you're writing copy that falls within the advertising realm, uh, you also, just as we've talked about before, you want to give some thought to uh, strategically how this is coming together. Uh, an advertisement or announcement for television is going to be very different than one for radio or one for newspapers or magazines. So even though the concepts are the same in terms of thinking it through as you write, you, you give a lot of thought to how the end product is going to be disseminated because that really makes the difference. What else do I want you to think about? Give some thought this week to credibility because credibility is a really important com component when we're talking about advertising because if we are persuading people to purchase a product or service, we, the communicator, have to appear credible and that product or service has to appear credible. And credibility can be built very easily, it can fall apart very easily, and people see it differently. There are people in this world who think Donald Trump is the best president the United States has ever had. They, they, they latch onto his every word, they believe everything he says, they would take a knife for him. They just think he's great. They think he's completely, utterly credible. And then there are people at the other end of the spectrum. You can go on social media and see examples of both. So, is Donald Trump credible? His credibility is in the eye of the beholder. Those people who think he's so amazing and, and credible, they have their reasons for that. And people who think he's a bumbling stooge, they have their reasons for that. So. I'm not going to take a position right now. Um, but that, that's the point here. Whether or not Trump is credible depends upon what you think and how you view the world and how you view his place in the world. And two people can have completely divergent opinions because they view the world differently. And so that's a lesson that we need to learn as public relations people and as potential advertising people if you go that direction. Because when you're communicating about a product, a service, or a person, you could be drafting a political advertisement, you're talking about a person, you are taking a very particular point of view and not everybody's going to agree with you. So you have to get inside the heads of those people you're communicating with and figure out what they think and why they think it and what is your purpose. Are you reinforcing their belief or are you trying to change their beliefs? And how you approach that strategically um, is a very serious business. And then on the notes we have a picture of this guy. Used to be one of the most credible people in America. Not anymore. 
And yet there are some people who still believe he is very credible. So there's another example. So anyway, talk brief, let me talk briefly about the, a couple of the assignments this week. Um, the public service announcement for radio. Give a lot of thought to that one. You're writing copy for a public service announcement that would go on the radio. It would be read by an announcer. So don't include sound effects, gongs, bells, whistles, explosions, all that. Don't include any of that stuff. It's just a straight read. You're writing the copy that an announcer would read on the air. In that assignment, I have asked you to produce an audio recording of, of your public service announcement. I'm not grading your PSA based on your audio recording. So don't get all tangled up in a knot about how it sounds when you read it. I'm only asking you to produce the audio recording because I want you to realize how little 30 seconds of copy is. Before I started doing this with the audio, audio recording, people would turn in copy that was like this, and I'd go, that's not 30 seconds. This is 30 seconds. So the audio recording part will help you practice and realize how few words you can use in 30 seconds. And you will find it's much more difficult to write this than it is to write this. And so that's part of the learning on the public service announcement. Remember to write it very conversationally. Use all caps. Remember it's being written for somebody to read in a booth like this. So it has to be very visual and easy, um, visual in terms of on the page, easy for them to see and read. Your team is going to work on the poopery message plan. Is this a real product? Yes, this is a real product. And in the past, when I've talked to students about this, some students are just absolutely repulsed that this product exists. They can't believe it. They think it's disgusting. The ads are gross. Ah! And there's other students who just think, this thing rocks. This is the funniest thing they've ever seen. And they're going to go out and buy some. So, you know, another example of how products hit people differently based on how they're thinking. So your team is going to develop this message plan following the basic steps that are shown in the book. I've cut the steps down a little bit for simplicity's sake because I want to keep things simple in this class. Um, but develop a message plan for poopery and um, give a lot of thought to your consumer, who you think the consumer is and how they would, how they would feel about this product. And uh, don't forget there's a quiz this week also. So... As they say on that horrible reality show, that's all I got for you. <laughs> Back to your tribe camp or whatever it is. I used to watch that and I don't watch it anymore because it's just repetitive, redundant, and stupid. Um, <clears throat> enough of my opinions for today. That's topic three. Thank you very much. We're getting close to the end in this class. Are you still hanging on? You're gonna make it. It's gonna be okay. And, and I hope by now you feel like you've learned a lot. So hang in there. Let me know if you've got any questions. See you later.